Hello my friends and welcome. Today here's a couple of short stories, of Ireland's involvement in the Second World War. The relationship between Ireland, the Irish and Britain has always been complex. Such was the case during World War II, when the Republic was neutral. At the time there was a fierce defense of Irish neutrality. Indeed, by the end of the war, neutrality had become a core value of Irish society, a core value that we still hold dear to this day. At the same time, a large number of Irish citizens, some 70,000, served in the British Armed Forces, together with another 50,000 from Northern Ireland. Here is the story about one of those men. Born on the 16th of October 1920, in Rat Mines, Dublin, Wing Commander Brendan Eamon Fergus Fanookin, known as Paddy to his colleagues, was a British World War II Royal Air Force fighter pilot, and flying ace, which is defined as a fighter pilot credited with five or more enemy aircraft destroyed in aerial combat. Born into a Catholic family, Paddy grew up during the period also known as the Early Troubles, and the Irish Civil War. In 1936, the family moved to England, where he developed an interest in aviation. Paddy was keen to fly. In April 1938, aged 17, the minimum application age, Paddy handed in his application to the Air Ministry at Kingsway in London, on his way to work. Eight weeks later, in June 1938, he was invited for an interview. He showed a keenness to fly, had sound school qualifications and a good sporting record. After waiting two months, in August 1938, Paddy was ordered to report to the Six Elementary and Reserve Flying Training School, at Sowell, in Northamptonshire. Within days, Paddy had taken to the skies with his instructor, flying the de Havilland Tiger Moth trainer. He was slow to come to grips with handling the aircraft, and he suffered a series of mishaps. During his training, on the 7th of September, he nearly flew into a hedge. He struggled in landing. Four days later, his tire burst on a landing approach. The plane bounced up into the air and Paddy barely recovered to make a heavy landing, although this time he was praised by his instructor. As they climbed out, they saw that the landing gear had been destroyed. Further heavy contact, said Paddy, and there would have been no more Paddy, and no more Mr. Morris. Roland Morris was an experienced instructor, with more than 2,000 hours. He was critical of Paddy's habit of trying to force the aircraft to do what he wanted, instead of coaxing it. Despite a series of blunders, Paddy wanted to fly solo. At that time, he was five hours flight training behind the rest of his group, but he made a successful solo trip on the 21st of September, after the completion of 14 hours piloting. The flight was not without fault, Paddy nearly stalled the aircraft after taking off. Nevertheless he was now one of the 45 pilots in his class to have completed 100 hours of piloting time on aircraft. After completing basic training on 28 October 1938, he was classed as an average pilot. But with effect from the following day, he was sent to the 8th Flying School, Montrose in Scotland. At Montrose, Paddy struggled with the more powerful Hawker Hart which was used for advanced training. His positioning in the air was poor and he struggled to hold a good landing pattern. One of his instructors remarked, the ground was never quite where Paddy expected it to be. On the 23rd of June, he was classed as average again, with low marks, of 59%. On the 10th of July, he crashed to Queen B, on a transport flight to Gosport in bad weather, which did not improve his standing as a pilot. He escaped with a cut thumb. In late summer, and with the luck of the Irish, he was miraculously regraded as a pilot officer. Paddy spent the winter of 1939-40, gaining as much flight practice as possible. However he was unable to gain any hours in fight aircraft. He was abruptly transferred to the Practice and Parachute Flight Center at Henlow. He had to settle for making trips around airfields in an antiquated Vickers Virginia as a co-pilot, ferrying engineers and ground crew, during September 1939. 
That month German forces invaded Poland, prompting Britain and France to declare war on Germany, and beginning the war in Europe. Paddy's piloting skills were far from being at the acceptable level for a fighter pilot. He continued in this trend until May 1940, when he was assigned to flying Miles Magister training aircraft. In May, German forces began the Battle of the Netherlands, and the Battle of Belgium which fell quickly. In June France collapsed. Fighter command now needed an influx of pilots after losses in Western Europe. Paddy's flying had improved and on 27 June 1940, he was posted to 7 Operational Unit, Edlewood near Chester. Paddy was to convert onto Supermarine Spitfires, while awaiting a fighter squadron posting. He made his first flight in a Spitfire on 3 July 1940, and made 26 such flights in 9 days. The pilots were tested on radio transmission, handling formation flying and aerobatics. On the 11th of July 1940 he was permitted just one firing practice. Paddy's first victory was scored on the 12th of August 1940, during the Battle of Britain. On that campaign, he was credited with two enemies destroyed, two probably destroyed, and one damaged. Promoted to acting flight lieutenant. In April 1941, he joined No. 452 Squadron, flying offensive patrols over France, known as the Circus Offensive. During this time, he had his most successful period of operations, destroying 20 German aircraft, sharing in the destruction of three with two damaged, and another two probably destroyed from 4 January to 13 October 1941. In January 1942, Paddy was promoted to the rank of squadron leader in No. 602 Squadron. Within six months, he was credited a further six individual victories bringing his tally to 28. Four more were damaged, four were shared destroyed and two credited as individual probable victories, and one shared probable. In 1942 he became the Royal Air Force's youngest wing commander in its history. He was appointed to lead, the Hornchurch Wing. On 15 July 1942, he took off with his flight for a mission over France. His Spitfire was damaged by flak fire from the ground. Paddy attempted to fly back to England across the English Channel, but was forced to ditch into the sea and subsequently vanished. After his death, Paddy's brother Raymond, served in 101 Squadron and survived the war. Paddy was credited with 28 aerial victories, 5 probably destroyed, 6 shared destroyed, 1 shared probable victory, and 8 damaged. Official records differ over the exact total. After the war, two of Paddy's victories that were credited as probables had, in fact been destroyed, but were not officially included. His total victory count could be as high as 32. Many sources credit him this figure and I would like to think that it is true. Not all our men felt so loyal to the Allies though, and a few joined the war fighting for the other side. They sided with the Nazis. So here is the story of James Brady, who was born on May 20, 1920. James was one of two Irishmen known to have served in the Waffen SS during World War II. James originally volunteered for the Royal Irish Fusiliers, an Irish regiment in the British Army, in late 1938. After basic training in Hampshire, in the May of 1939, he was posted to the Channel Islands. In that month he and another man, Frank Stringer, were imprisoned after attacking and injuring a local policeman, and were then captured by the Germans when they invaded the islands in June 1940. The Germans transferred the pair to a prisoner of war camp, but soon they were transferred to the Special Abwehr facility, at Frieser Camp, to recruit them as saboteurs. Stringer proved willing to fight for the Nazis, and in September 1941, he and John Codd were transferred to Berlin to begin explosives training at the Abwehr Raining Camp. That December, 
James and a group of other Irishmen were also transferred to Berlin to begin similar training. This latter group, however, would seem to have been secretly working on the orders of the senior British officer, at Friesack, to sabotage the German scheme. By September 1942, all the Irishmen involved were imprisoned by the Germans, some in Saxon Horsen concentration camp. In early 1943, James and Stringer were released by the Germans and kept in readiness for Operation Osprey. Subsequently, they volunteered for the Waffen SS and underwent training in occupied Alsace-Lorraine. In January 1944, they were recruited to SS Sonderverband ZBV Friedenthal, which later became the SS Jäger Battalion 502, and later still the SS Jägerverband MIT, a special forces unit, under the command of Otto Johann Anton Skortsny. Then in late 1944, James was involved in Operation Landfried, behind the lines of operations in Romania, and in Operation Panzerfaust, the raid on Budapest to prevent Admiral Miklos Horthy from making a separate peace with the Soviets. He also fought at Schwet and Oda with Skorzeny's impromptu division in January 1945 and was wounded at the Zaden Bridgehead in March. He later fought in the Battle of Berlin. He surrendered to the British Army in 1946 and was sentenced to 15 years in prison, of which the general officer commanding London remitted to three years. He was released in 1950 and returned to Ireland, where he later died, though the date of his death is unknown. And that my friends is another tale, from Ireland's twisted, history. Thank you for watching, and goodbye for now.